Good evening. Today is Thursday, March 21st, 2024. This is the regular board meeting of the Waterbury Board of Ed. I'd like for Eric Estrada and Sophia Nugent to come to the podium so that you could be recognized for the beautiful music that you guys performed for us. Is there someone else? That's it, okay. okay. You, come on up and introduce yourself. Yeah. Miss Case has been with us for many years here, thank you. So this is Sophia Nguyen, Eric Estes. Eric Estes is senior here. Sophia's in sixth grade here. I wow. would love to say that I taught them everything they know, but they came to me with it. <laughs> And I just want to thank them because it was kind of last minute, but they stepped up and did it. It was very nice. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, I, Ms. Case, before you leave, I, I know I'm trying to keep her, but Ms. Case is also going to be retiring at the end of this year. It's a huge loss for Waterbury Public Schools. I just want to thank you um, publicly for your service. Um, you know, program has thrived with your um, leadership and your uh, fine mu musicianship and uh, you will be dearly missed and of course um, uh, with the two wonderful students Sophia and Eric uh, are examples of the wonderful ways that you have impacted children in Waterbury so thank you. Thank you. Dr. Ruffin do you have any remembrances tonight? Yes, President Hernandez, we do. In our moment of silence this evening, let us remember former members of the Waterbury Public Schools education community who have passed away. Rose Penacion, retired teacher at Washington Ele uh, Elementary School, who passed away on February 29th. Thelma Williams, former Board of Education Commissioner, from 1992 to 1995, passed away on March 11th. Dolores Grant Atuck, retired food service worker, passed away on March 14th. Michael Aronimo, retired director of elementary education, passed away on March 16th. Let us keep them in thought and prayer along with their families. Can I have the student representative? Kelsey? Lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Vice President Brown? Here. Commissioner Cudius? Commissioner Ireland? Here. Commissioner Jackson? Present. Commissioner Navarro? Here. Commissioner O'Brien? Here. Commissioner Orso? Here. Commissioner Serrano Adorno? Here. Commissioner Van Stone? Present. Here. Here. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner O'Brien, will you make a motion for communications? A motion to receive and place on file communications as listed. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. A motion to suspend the regular order of business to hear from the public. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
All speakers are encouraged to submit prepared written statements to the commissioners. Comments shall be limited to a maximum of five minutes. There will be no responses to this evening to any questions or concerns raised. They will be referred to the administration for review and response. Thank you. First speaker is Roberta Crispino. Sorry if I messed that up. <laughs> Good evening, Superintendent Ruff and members of the Board of Education, uh, public. I'm here tonight to lobby for and ask you to consider naming or renaming a school here after the late Rena Weller Karifa Smart. Rena grew up on Bishop Street in Waterbury, and in 1945, she exceeded everybody's expectations by being the first African-American woman to graduate from Yale Divinity School. Um, she went on to become a theological witness on the world stage when mentors for women of color were rare. As a retired teacher, I learned the, the value of the quality of wonder. And I'm sure there are people who would wonder why someone like me would want to nominate a, uh, an African-American woman. As a teacher, I value rising above anyone's expectations. Uh, my relationship with the black community started when I was a young boy growing up in the 50s and 60s. Uh, being Italian, um, the Italians in the black community in North End of Waterbury worked side by side and lived side, side by side. So at a young age, I gained an appreciation of the, of the culture. And I think as a teacher, we're supposed to involve ourselves with other cultures and respect individual differences. Um, I also learned that in Waterbury, there are only four schools that have been named after women. Mary Abbott, Margaret Croft, Mary Rotella, and Margaret Generale. Um, in my life, I've learned that a woman's spirit nurtures. And I think that as a school, um, and it's an important quality to, to nurture um, students. Now, recently, after reading of Mayor Pernarisky's vision for what to do with the Sacred Heart property, um, my own personal experience in the life choices that I've made, you know, I ended up homeless. And so I gained an understanding of what it is to be homeless and how to rise up above being homeless. And I think the mayor has a, has a vision and a dream. And to, to work on that vision, to make the dream come true, you have to have a certain uh, um, quality about you to go forward with that. So I think that I would recommend naming uh, the Sacred Heart property after uh, Ms. Garifa Smart um, because it's that aura, it's that spirit of the person that would transcend itself down more so than just academic rigor. Uh, it's the quality that we all have, and like I said earlier, to respect individual differences and to help each other to rise up. So that's why I'm here tonight, and that's why I'm asking you to consider. Thank you. Well Thank you. Next speaker is Michelle Salgado. Hi, how are you? Michelle Salgado, okay. Waterbury. Hello, Speak a little. Oh, sorry. There, okay. <laughs> Hello, commissioners, Mayor, Dr. Ruffin. Um, Mr. Mayor, during your campaign, you spoke about how you wanted to work with Dr. Ruffin, the, uh, the Education Department, and the Board of Education. One thing you wanted to do was put a liaison to help build a partnership with City Hall and the Chase Building. But have you done that? You have been in office for three months, and if you really wanted to 
if you really wanted that connection to work, why isn't there a liaison? I would think that would be one of the first things you did if you really cared about the staff and the 19,000 students the superintendent is in charge of. But yet, you don't want to give Dr. Ruffin a three-year contract. What is the just cause for that? How are we, the people who voted for you, supposed to believe that you will do what you say if you can't even stick to your own campaign promises? What's next or not next? Thank you. Next speaker, Kevin Egan. Thank you all, good evening. Um, just here to tonight to briefly go over some results that uh, the WTA survey we initiated this week just a couple days ago in response to us realizing that you were going to have a conversation about the superintendent's contract tonight. So we thought it was important, I know you hear from me all the time, but I thought it was important that you get a quick snapshot of what our members are thinking and what they're saying. And in just two days, we got a, around 700 responses. I included a copy for all of you to follow along, but just a couple uh, points to bring out to you um, that some of the results were, were really overwhelming and quite alarming. Uh, is a superintendent an effective communicator who promptly and effectively addresses district-wide safety-related issues? 80%, 560 votes, no. Uh, my employee morale as a Waterbury educator is high, average, or low? 60% low, 33% average. Has a superintendent created a work environment that makes you want to stay in Waterbury as a teacher? 87%, 611 votes, no. 12%, yes. The superintendent fosters an environment that allows school administrators to handle student discipline issues in an effective manner and to capably ensure teacher and student protection in the classroom. Overwhelming, 86%, no. Do you believe that current student discipline policies and protocols ensure that you and your students are safe in the classroom? 86%, 600 votes, no. Do you feel that teacher protection and student safety is a priority of the superintendent and the school district? 85%, no, 596 votes. And lastly, if our teachers were to assign a letter grade to the superintendent's overall performance, and you had to choose between A, B, C, D, and F, we have 37% uh, that would say F, 33% would say D, and 20% would say C. Now, no doubt that these feelings that many of my members are having are the result of a lot of the issues that we've been discussing. Um, in response, in my discussions with, with, the, with our teachers, it's the same thing. They feel that there's a lack of communication, consistency, and accountability from the superintendent's office. They, we have an overinflated central office staff that continues to grow with salaries in the millions. I stand corrected, I said a million in the, in the article. Uh, we continue to experience a mass exodus and continued shortage of teachers with extremely low morale. Administrators that fear retaliation and who continue to leave the district. A bilingual department that uh, has now, we, ha we see classes exceeding 35 students, no, still no director in place, and a budget last year that included hundreds of thousands of dollars in overages that were never addressed until late. We still see stagnant test scores, no doubt due to non-certified sub substitutes in classrooms. A special ed department that struggles to have consistent leadership and also believe that discipline is implemented consistently throughout the district. It is not and an investigation from the Department of Justice that went largely ignored, which resulted in unsafe schools and a no arrest policy that does nothing but decrease school safety and increase school chaos. I would ask you, commissioners, to take a long thought tonight about this conversation. Think about tabling this conversation until you have an opportunity to digest the results of the survey, what we've said, and I'm also aware that the administrators did a climate survey uh, on behalf of their members. Let's not rush to any decision tonight. Think about what the teachers and what the administrators are saying, because at the end of the night, I would say, is this what we want for our students for the next three years? Thank you.
Next speaker, Athena Wagner. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. In regards to renewing the superintendent's contract, <clears throat> what I just heard, is it true or not? Who knows? Who authorized the surveys? Why were they done at the 11th hour at this time? I'll tell you why. Because Kevin Egan, the teachers union president, is on his racist shenanigans to get rid of the current black superintendent. Darren Schwartz just got his doctorate. He's their good old boy who will lick the boots of whoever to get what he wants. I hope the Department of Justice sues the devil right out of this racist district. We fought hard to get the superintendent here. And she has done a phenomenal job with diversity, equity, and inclusion. She fought to decrease student arrests as an unwarranted means of discipline instead of a last, instead of a last resort. She's accessible and supportive of staff and has raised the expectation standards to ensure a quality education for our district students and families with much resistance from the whites in power, Kevin Eakin. She secured much educational funding for Waterbury and quite successfully led the district through one of the worst pandemics, yet they want to get rid of her. I am sick and tired of the continuous blatant attack on our good black educators in the dirty water. In contrast, someone devised a survey that was sent out to the Waterbury Teachers Union and the school administrators union members with the deliberate intent to possibly use as leverage against Dr. Verna Ruffin. It was sent out yesterday with a deadline of today for submission, or day before yesterday with a deadline of yesterday. However, Dr. Verna Ruffin has already been evaluated. This racist attack on our good black edu educators just doesn't stop in Waterbury. There were no surveys of this nature conducted for our former white racist superintendent that lost a high profile discrimination lawsuit and cost the city millions. Brown versus Waterbury Board of Education. As a matter of fact, the former superintendent was actually given a substantial raise and her contract was automatically renewed. Kathleen Olette, the former Waterbury superintendent who came here from the Manchester School District, was ultimately fired slashed allowed to resign. This is no more, not to renew her contract, exemplifies to me no more than the existing DNA of Waterbury, of the city of Waterbury and the Waterbury Department of Education that is rooted in racism. Thank you. Commissioner Ireland, may I have a motion? Because there are no more speakers. A motion to return to the regular order of business. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Superintendent's announcements. Thank you, President Hernandez, Vice President <laughs> Brown, Secretary Serrano Adorno, Commissioners, Mayor Pernarisky, it's a pleasure to be able to share with you some of the highlights in Waterbury Public Schools today. You will remember the well, last board meeting was a little bit long, so we didn't get a chance to cover some of the wonderful things that were happening at that meeting, and then we've added some more, so you'll be hearing quite a bit tonight. And um, I will start with wishing every single board member uh, a, a happy appreciation month 
and uh, the celebration here this evening was just a, a slight uh, celebration, just a little token of our appreciation for the work that you do, uh, your tireless work that you do. And uh, I, I sincerely appreciate you uh, as a board and appreciate you as uh, servants of the community and the voices for the people that you serve in your various districts, but most importantly for what you do collectively for all of the children in Waterbury Public Schools. So congratulations to you and I'd like the audience to give you a big round of applause. If you'll notice the, behind the um, reception area, there are signs, there are notes, there are messages uh, created for you by the students of Waterbury Public Schools. Take time to read what some of those messages say, uh, as well as um, prior to the actual meeting, um, you will see a little bio about you and uh, your long-term or short-term service to Waterbury Public Schools, because we do have some new members. Uh, all of you are appreciated for the collective work that you do. And I also want to thank you for your dedication in um, being responsive to um, yesterday's uh, uh, meeting to learn more about some of the things I will talk about later on this evening. The students have also prepared some goodies for you. You have a goodie bag. Um, they are from students and schools across the district. Um, all 33 of them recognize and appreciate you. We are very happy that Roberto Clemente International Dual Language Schools Principal Tomasella and the 2023 Teacher of the Year, Mrs. Cruz, was able to appear on La Bamba and discuss the 50-50 instructional model at International, as well as to share our school mission for the school. The interview focus uh, was on alerting prospective students and parents of the up upcoming lottery at International. I want to commend the school for their, um, their critical thinking through how to get more people to understand what a dual language school is. Um, we have a long waiting list for international school, but the waiting list is predominantly English speaking. And it was critically important that the school thought about ways to be able to communicate effectively what the real purpose of this school is. And they were able to deliver that message in Spanish uh, so our parents could understand that our students attending this dual language school will 50% of the students already speak Spanish and 50% of the school doesn't speak Spanish at all. And it's a total immersion program whereby students at the International Dual Language School will leave by the time they are in eighth grade totally um, biliterate, bilingual, they will be able to read, write, and speak, and communicate effectively in both languages, and who knows what it will develop beyond the eighth grade for this amazing group of students. So uh, they were able to convey that in such a way that our parents were able to understand the benefits attending, of attending our dual language immersion school. And um, I think you're going to be very pleased with everything that has been done thus far, moving to third grade, and then next year, of course, with our fourth graders going to International Dual Language School, Roberta Clemente International Dual Language School. We have some more highlights with WCA winning the Naugatuck Valley League Championship. WCA boys basketball team won the NVL Championship for the second consecutive year. Uh, WCA ranked number eight in the state in the state poll and are in their ninth season as a varsity program. Congratulations to the team and their coaches for an amazing season and success. Yay! Wallace Middle School girls basketball undefeated in junior NVL. Wallace girls basketball team um, has a season of 14 and 0. And Wallace captured the championship and claimed the junior NVL regular season and tournament titles and finished with an overall record of 16 to 1. Congratulations to the team, coaches, for their amazing season and success. <laughs> Maloney Magnet School, Read Across America Day. Um, Read Across America Day began on March 2nd. 
And um, if you'd like to follow along, you're going to see some pretty amazing pictures that are on those um, on the um, boards here, as well as the um, probably you can access that uh, electronically as well. But several of our board members and board leaders and community leaders stop in at Maloney to read to several classrooms. Uh, readers included our Deputy Superintendent, Dr. Schwartz, uh, State Representative Jerry Reyes, and Waterbury Police Department, Waterbury Fire Department, as well as other members of our Waterbury uh, staff. And um, I believe the mayor went there too. <laughs> yeah, we did a lot of schools. Uh, Hopeville Elementary Read Across America. National Read Across America began on March 2nd, as I previously said, and several board members and leaders in the community were there to be able to read at Hopeville to celebrate in several classrooms. Uh, included was the Deputy Superintendent, Assistant Superintendent Dr. Johnson, um, our, our Director of Human Capital, Jean, uh, our um, uh, Vice President of the Board, uh, Ms. Brown, our State Representative, Jerry Reyes, Congresswoman uh, Johanna Hayes, um, and uh, Representative Megan Perry, and we had WFSB News 3 anchor, Noir Asone, and the Waterbury Fire Department. And I'm certain that we had other staff from Waterbury Public Schools to stop by and to read to the children at Hopewell as well. At Roberto Clemente International School Read Across America Day, uh, the Mayor Pernaruski stopped in to International School and to read to the class, and I think he had a good time, as evidenced <laughs> by the pictures here. I think he was having a blast. <laughs> and I had the privilege of going to the school as well as other members of our staff. Kennedy High School Robotics Team. Uh, we visited the, uh, the Kennedy High School Robotics Team with the Supervisor of Career and Technical Education, Mike Marotti. The robotics team showcased the sh short-circuited Eagles robot, and while there, we received jerseys. I love my jersey. You can see me there wearing it for the robotics team. And the, ro the robot competed at the New England First Robotics Competition and came in 14 with 17 wins and five losses. I was really proud of, um, of this team. I'm proud of both um, the Kennedy team as well as the uh, will be team for participating in FIRST Robotics. Uh, very importantly is that for a period of time, the Kennedy team didn't exist anymore. It used to be one of the strongest ones, and then it didn't exist anymore, and then they resurrected themselves and got a lot of community support. Alumni came back, they supported the school, and they were able to get back into the game with, uh, with the robots. So I'm very proud of Kennedy, I'm proud of Wilby, and uh, next year we're working on Crosby and we're working on WCA as well. Rotella's showcase, uh, the student artwork was absolutely amazing. So our fifth grade student, Chase Boggs, uh, st stopped by Waterbury Hospital this week to view his artwork, which was exhibited in the hospital. Chase has 30 pieces of artwork on display in the main corridor of Waterbury Hospital. Chase is also this year's Superintendent Student Recognition recipient at Rotella. Uh, we invited folks to visit Waterbury Hospital to check out his amazing work, and we want to congratulate him for sharing this amazing talent with our community. Wow. We want to congratulate. I mentioned this last week, but now, you know, he, he's actually, I got to show the slides today, so congratulations to De Deputy Superintendent Dr. Schwartz on receiving his doctorate degree. We're very proud of you. <laughs> Waterbury Public Schools, The Source Podcast, episode three aired on March 8th, and it was exciting. Uh, I think the more of these that we do with students, the more excited I get. Um, Waterbury, The Source, um, aired on March 8th, uh, highlighting and spotlighting student success agency. Special guests included Dr. Wilson, who is the Vice President of Partnerships Student Success Agency, and two of our WAM students, um, Nadina and Eric. Uh, the podcast will be available and is available now on YouTube and Spotify and will be shared and has already been shared on um, Parent Square. The video is really amazing and if you were to listen to the two students experience 
uh, uh, their experience with Student Success Agency. I think you would be very pleased with um, the impact that this resource has had on, on students in Waterbury. We are very excited about our 2024 Teachers of the Year. Um, this celebration will be held on May 21st at the Palace Theater. The names of all of the teachers and their respective schools are, um, are displayed. We are so very proud of them. While we have amazing teachers in Waterbury Public Schools, this is an opportunity to recognize at least one teacher every year for the amazing work that they do within their school, which will culminate in an identification of one teacher of the year, and that teacher will be recognized in Hartford later on during the summer. As well, we also recognize other um, outstanding leaders within the district in various other occupational fields in Waterbury Public Schools, and we will be doing that at the same ceremony on May 21st. We have 30 Waterbury Public Schools uh, high school juniors visiting multiple out-of-state colleges and universities by participating in the Gear Up Waterbury New England College Tour. Gear Up Waterbury is a partnership between Connecticut State Colleges and Universities um, in Waterbury and the Connecticut State Community College, Naugatuck Valley. It's the goal to improve the number of city students prepared for and ready for success in college. Campus tours are a very important feature of that program. The students chosen for the trip completed a rigorous application process through Gear Up, and the students that attended were students from Crosby, Kennedy, Waterbury Career Academy, Waterbury Arts Magnet, and Wilby. Attendees needed to achieve a minimum cumulative simple grade point average of 3.3 to meet attendance standards and to submit an essay explaining their post-secondary plans. It was an overnight tour, which took place February 29th to March 3rd. Participants visited out-of-state institutions such as Bentley University, Boston College, Brandeis University, Brown University, Bryant University, and Providence College. Our school visits, which took place yesterday, um, School visits allowed us to chat with administrators, students, and educators at Crosby, Wallace, um, Chase, Bucks Hill, and Bucks Hill Pre-K. Those were the schools we were able to visit yesterday. We have two other schools that were on the, the agenda we could not get to because we had a very tight schedule, but we plan on visiting many more schools and um, having more dialogues with our administrators, which I already do and I'll continue to do. Uh, some extra good news that is not up on the slides, but I want to share with you. We, um, we've already shared that with our Board of Ed, but I want to share publicly that we are opening a class um, at uh, Walsh to be able to assist in our growing number of bilingual students in Waterbury Public Schools. We know that that is a, a growing number. It could grow tomorrow, and it usually does grow almost on a week-to-week -week basis, and it has caused us to have um, uh, to rethink how we could possibly find a teacher and the space to open up another classroom. Through the collective work of the uh, school teams, um, my central office staff who seated here and others, uh, certainly the principals of the schools, we were able to identify students that live close to or in closer proximity to Walsh Elementary School that would help the students to be able to get to their bilingual class much easier. And for the students that don't live as close, we would be able to provide transportation. And we have been able to uh, hire someone who will be able to teach the class, which will begin on Monday, March 25th. So we're very pleased to be able to do that. We're still going to continue to look at different ways that we can expand the spaces in Waterbury Public Schools to accommodate the growing enrollment that we have in not only our bilingual programs, but also other programs that are very popular, but also because our enrollment continues to increase. So the classes at uh, Walsh, uh, the uh, parents will have an opportunity tomorrow to actually visit the classroom with their new teacher 
Uh, in addition to that, the, uh, the classroom is all set up and all prepared. We've been working on this for a while, but it was very important to communicate to the parents the why, because it's very difficult to be able to take a child from a school in March to relocate. So that personal touch was very important and it has been provided to all of our families so that they know uh, and they, they are comfortable with why this change is occurring in March. We also have a lot of plans for the 24-25 uh, school year, which includes how we could potentially expand uh, pre-K, which is also growing. And um, we have plans to be able to open some classes at Kingsbury for the 24-25 school year. Those plans are underway. It will require some minimum uh, uh, construction, which our team here in Waterbury will be able to do. We're very pleased to announce that those are things that are on the way to be able to accommodate another growing number of students, which is our pre-K. I want to be clear that we're not only growing in pre-K, but we currently have at the pre-K center with students that are attending only part-time. And for some students, especially students that are preparing to go on into kindergarten, it's really important for them to be in school uh, full-time. We're not able to provide those services right now because we have a limited space. Um, but we are working towards creating a, multiple spaces with limited space available to create an environment whereby students who are the most vulnerable students in preparation for kindergarten, which is a very important year for them, to be able to have the maximum education before they can be moved into kindergarten. And that's part of the challenges that we still face, but we uh, will be mitigating some of that next year, but it will not be over. There's still a need to continue to expand pre-K. Um, our enrollment does continue to grow in Waterbury. It is one of maybe the only urban district in the state of Connecticut that's growing. Many urban districts are declining. Waterbury has shown growth, substantial growth this year. And I believe if the data is correct, we probably grew in bilingual more than any other area within all of our uh, student enrollment groups. I'm very pleased uh, to also announce that we will be um, adding another component to our alternative school. Um, you know, I want to thank the team for working on that. Um, we had, we had um, Jade Gopi worked on it, um, um, Lisa Ariolo, um, Wendy Johns, Darren Schwartz, uh, Juan Mendoza. Um, we had uh, Jan Frenis. Um, all of the, and of course we have to, we, we always do that in, in collaboration with um, uh, our finance department, but this was already something that we had in the budget. We were, we were holding on to that with, for Prosper for Success. But the need for the alternative school at this point uh, will allow us to be able to move as quickly as we can find two teachers. Uh, it's an, it's a, it's a different kind of program, so I want to tell everybody to be on the lookout for the advertisement because it's not something that occurs during the traditional day. It actually starts at 2.30 in the afternoon. And so uh, to advise staff as, as, as well as maybe some retirees who are interested in coming back to Waterbury, um, we are going to be advertising to fill those positions, which will also include counselor and our social worker and a behavior tech to be able to work with the teachers in a virtual and an in-person environment. So students will get both. So stay tuned because our staff will be advertising this and they will also be sending out reminders for people who may be interested in creativity and joining a team who's very much going to be creating this, this program which will afford our students who are the most challenged behaviorally an opportunity to be successful and graduate on time by providing this virtual learning as well as in-person learning environment for the future. Um, this concludes my announcements for today. Um, as uh, Commissioner uh, Arso has told me, I've talked enough, and so uh, I didn't let you forget that. Thank you very much. Commissioner Serrano O'Dorno. Oh, God. She didn't know my name. She didn't know my name. My goodness.
Juanita, we'll talk after. I don't know. <laughs> Dr. Ruffin, thank you so much for the updates. These are probably one of my favorite things that you could probably see. I have them all in my binder because I like to always go back. And, and I've always said this, I like to celebrate the small little victories and accomplishments that our districts and our students and teachers make. Um, you know, with that said, I know yesterday, during yesterday's meeting, and, and I'll say it again, I want to thank your entire cabinet and yourself for always thinking outside the box and trying to find alternatives for our students. You know, you're giving them second chances or to some maybe the last chance. Um, and you've always find a way to think for the greater good of our students and our families. And, and even thinking about um, finding alternatives to fulfill the needs as far as the pre-Ks and the bilingual. So I just want to thank you so much. You know, you're very visible in the schools. I love that you're constantly visiting and maintaining that open communication that even though some say that you, you lack, I, I personally do not see. So I want to commend you and I appreciate everything that you, each and every, it's, it's Board of Ed Month, but you know, really, we wouldn't be doing all this if it wasn't collectively. So I'm very proud to be on this board. Thank you, Dr. Ruffin. Thank you, Madam President. You're welcome. Any other? Okay. I'm gonna take my mask off for this. So that I could be heard. First, I'd like to apologize to several schools and its students, Kingsbury, Hopeville, and Maloney Magnet. I was unable to attend their Dr. Seuss event and Black History Month door decoration contest due to being ill. Moving forward, please don't hesitate to invite me to your school events. I would also like to thank Principal Eric Brown, his staff, and students for the lovely Get Well card. It was a nice reminder of what we do for everyone and that it's a little bit appreciated. I also want to congratulate Alderman Mosley for being African American Mayor for the day, which I also missed. I was able to attend Waterbury Career Academy's event, which always is something to experience. They had dancing, recitals, poems, um, a parade of attire from the countries that they are from, the diverse staff population. They, had, they also did the school drum corps. I even got to dance with the students, which a few <laughs> of them were shocked. So thank you for allowing me to participate. Last month was Black History Month. We celebrated the res resilience, courage, and achievements of those individuals we have sh who have shaped our nation's cultural, social, and political landscapes. As educators and leaders in our communities, we have a responsibility to, to ensure that the stories and experiences of African Americans are not only recognized, but also integrated in our curriculum and educational programs year round. As we honor the past, let us also look to the future and hope, with hope and determination for a better future for everyone. <laughs> there have been some, there's been something said about this board's unwillingness to speak to people, and I think that I can speak for all the commissioners on this board. We do not take this position lightly, and we respect it. But as we also have lives, with that being said, it's, if someone cannot get to a question because there is always a deadline or they are unsure of an answer and seek the correct one before giving an answer, that should be respected as well. Our responsibility to the 19,000 students, their parents and staff are ensured we are transparent and putting the correct information out there for everyone. This district has a lot of positive things going on. Our students are amazing. Let's shine some light on them and think of positive things. This concludes my report. Thank you. You're welcome. Student representatives comments. Introduce yourself and <clears throat> Hi, I'm Khalees. Um I didn't have anything prepared for tonight, so. That's okay. I'm sorry, I don't have any comments. <laughs> Talk 
Welcome. Okay. Welcome. Can I say yes, you can, Doc. You may not have anything prepared for tonight, but I do remember when you were asked a question not very long ago, um, and we asked that question about Wilby, and you chimed in, and you had so much to say. <laughs> uh, the experiences that you had from when you first entered to where it is now. So you do have a lot to say, and I appreciate that. <laughs> do you want to say some or <laughs> go right ahead? Okay, she's okay. All right, let's go. Yeah, I really, um, everything's good in school. Everything is um, normal the way it should be, and I'm glad because, you know, that's how it's supposed to be. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Does anyone wish to remove an item from the consent calendar? No. Item 9.1, Committee on Finance. Request approval of Amendment 2 to the Professional Service Agreement Rubicon West LLC on, for online curriculum and lesson planning warehouse. 9.2, Committee on Building and School Facilities. Use of school facilities by school organizations and or city departments. 9.3, Committee on Building and School Facilities. Use of school facilities by outside organizations and or waiver request. Commissioner Navarro, may I have a motion? I motion to approve consent calendars item 9.1 through 9.3 as read. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Discussion? Motion carries. Committee on Finance, Commissioner Orso. Madam President, first of all, I'm glad you're here tonight. I'm glad you're feeling better. Thank you. Same. Item 11.1, .1. ladies and gentlemen, Committee on Finance moves that the Waterbury Board of Education approve a construction contract RFP 7930 with Silktown Roofing for Kennedy High School roof replacement. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Item 11.2. Ladies and gentlemen, the Committee on Finance moves at the Waterbury Board of Education. Approve a construction contract, RFP 7932, with Silktown Roofing for Sprague Elementary School roof replacement. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 11.3. Ladies and gentlemen, the Committee on Finance moves that the Waterbury Board of Education approve a construction contract, RFP 7931 with Silktown Roofing for Tinker Elementary School roof replacement. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Committee on Policy and Legislation, Vice President Brown. Thank you, Madam President. 12.1, uh, request approval of new policy number 4115.3 Coaches evaluation. Second. Discussion. Uh, would somebody? She did. Somebody did say okay. second. Dr. Schwartz is going to oh, explain it. Oh, okay. okay. Or did you? Is there somebody else? I said discussion now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor Penrusky, President Hernandez, Vice President Brown, Secretary Serrano Adorno our Board of Education members, student representatives, and Dr. Ruffin. Um, yes, this is a uh, mandated policy for us to pass. It comes from Connecticut General Statute 10-222E and requires annual evaluations done for all coaches, and uh, those will be done by our athletic directors, and if an athletic director is not available, it would be the administrator of the school. And the other, the other thing I would add is, if I, if I correct, is this makes us compliant with the state law now. 
Yes, it does. Yes, okay. Who, who does the evaluations? The athletic directors. Oh, okay. And if they're not available, then the administrator from the school. Okay, thank you. I didn't hear you if you said that earlier. Any other questions? One, one quick one. Oh, Commissioner Russell. Darren, uh, the evaluation, it, it, does the state provide the guidelines for this evaluation? No know? guidelines are provided. It would be something that uh, I've been talking to human capital with and that we'd have to engage uh, the union with. There is some contract language regarding um, coaching in the WTA contract. However, um, that language isn't necessarily tied into evaluation, but in terms of forms and process, it's something that I'm pretty sure we can work out uh, between human capital and the WTA. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 12.2. Request approval of revive, revised policy number 6146, graduation requirements. Can I get a second? Second. Discussion? No discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. President, President Brown. Vice President Brown. <laughs> 12.3, request approval of revised policy number 7230.2, indoor air quality, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number 13, Committee on the Whole, Vice President Brown. Thank you, Madam President. 13.1, request approval of Waterbury Public Schools Increasing Educator Diversity Plan 2024. Second. Juan, you have something for us? Good evening, Mayor Panarewski, President Hernandez, Vice President Brown. Secretary Serrano Adorno, Commissioners, Student Representatives, and Superintendent Dr. Ruffin. I am Juan Mendoza, Assistant Superintendent of Human Capital, and tonight joining me to present are Carly Carpenteri and Marissa Waters, Supervisor of Talent and Professional Development. Unfortunately, Dr. White was going to join us tonight, but she couldn't make it. However, we'll share some of our insights on equity and inclusion later on tonight. Tonight, we plan to present our Increasing Educator Diversity Plan for Waterbury Public Schools. We'll divert your attention to our presentation. While we remain above the state average in hiring certified educators of color, which we have previously shared with you, our goal is to continue working to cultivate a diverse educator workforce that mirrors the student demographics in our classrooms. Under Public Act 23-167, Section 10, all school districts are now mandated to craft and submit an increasing educator diversity plan. Mm. To comply with the legislation set forth by the Connecticut State Department of Education, we assembled a team to assess our district's needs initiated the development of our IED plan. We utilized the Connecticut State Department of Education's Creating an Action Plan and sustaining efforts to increase Educator Diversity Toolkit for guidance. The IED team consisted of myself, Dr. Darren Schwartz, Deputy Superintendent, Nicholas Salvini, Chief Operating Officer, Janet Frenis, Chief Academic Officer, Jade Gopi, Assistant Superintendent, Dr. Joseph Johnson, Assistant Superintendent, Dr. Laura White, Director of Equity and Inclusion, Carly Carpenteri, Talent Supervisor, Marissa Waters, Talent Supervisor, Pete McCaslin, Principal, and Carmen Rios, Fifth Grade Teacher. We'd like to thank all the team members for all of their time and dedication in crafting this plan. We have given you all a copy of the concert plan for review. Today's presentation will focus on highlighting key aspects of the plan. While we won't delve into every single detail, we aim to provide a clear overview of our strategies and objectives outlined within the Increasing Educator Diversity Plan for the Waterbury Public Schools.
The Connecticut State Department of Education requires all districts to identify three goals, a recruitment goal, a hiring goal, and a retention goal. In these next few slides, we will be reviewing each goal along with the strategies to help us achieve these goals. Several strategies outlined in our IED plan have been put into action and will undergo ongoing review and improvement. The initial objective outlined in our IED plan as presented on this slide, centers on recruitment. Our aim is to enhance our recruitment efforts by increasing the percentage of multilingual teachers and teachers of color participating in our Grow Your Own programs annually by 10%. To achieve this, we plan to diversify our candidate pool through implementing new initiatives while fortifying existing Grow Your Own programs. These initiatives will offer alternative pathways for non-certified staff to pursue their teaching certification. In order to achieve our IED recruitment goal, we will review and revise application questions to eliminate any bias, continue to participate in HBCU and HSI educator career fairs, Collaborate with RAICES to gather and analyze data from community focus groups to identify and remove any barriers hindering BIPOC students from becoming WPS educators. Develop a guide to becoming a WPS educator available in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Maintain our current Grow Your Own programs such as the Connecticut Teacher Residency Program, Relay, Next Gen Educators, University Partnerships, the Yukon Teacher Residency Program, and Ed Rising. Introduce new Grow Your Own programs starting fall 2024, which include the Central Inspire Teacher Residency Program and our Waterbury Public Schools Teacher Apprenticeship Program. The next goal outlined in our IED plan centers on hiring. As previously shared, our hiring of certified educators of color continues to exceed the state average of 11.8%. In the 2022-2023 school year, approximately 35.6% of all new hires were diverse staff of color, representing a 10.54% increase from the previous year. Due to the challenge of recruiting teachers of color stemming from low enrollment in teacher preparation programs, all 172 Connecticut school districts are vying for the same pool of candidates. After careful review of our data trends, our aim is to sustain a minimum hiring rate of at least 25% for multilingual teachers and teachers of color annually. We will ensure that the application and interview procedures adhere to the best practices of hiring educators with a focus on equity. To meet our IED hiring objective, we will produce an anti-bias training video for interview panelists to foster a more inclusive experience for all participants, <clears throat> sustain our WPS new teacher equity training and conduct, conduct bus tours of school communities, update and employ interview guidelines accessible via shared Google Drive, incorporating opportunities for WPS students to engage in the interview process when appropriate, simplify the onboarding process for all candidates, and track the percentage of qualified administrators and teachers of color applicants successfully hired. Our third and final goal is to maintain a retention rate of 95% for multilingual teachers and teachers of color by the end of each school year. We are committed to fostering equitable school environments and providing career advancement opportunities where multilingual teachers and teachers of color feel appreciated, secure, and supported. I am presenting this slide on behalf of Dr. White tonight. Um, our strategies for achieving our IED retention goals include establishing systems to monitor the retention rate of multilingual teachers and teachers of color, initiating the annual tracking of multilingual teachers and teachers of color retention rates, sustaining affinity groups, 
providing professional development sessions on equitable policies and practices, as well as enhancing school culture and climate, pairing new teachers of color with teachers of color mentors whenever it's possible and feasible, conducting anonymous surveys to gather feedback from multilingual teachers and teachers of color. In addition, the diversity, equity, and leadership teams will identify and recommend various topics and skills necessary for professional development and district-wide training. And school equity leadership teams will identify and acquire and offer resource training and support to cultivate more inclusive and equitable school communities. The Connecticut State Department of Education extended an invitation to all schools to participate in a voluntary 30-minute consultation session aiming at reviewing draft plans. We attended a session and received feedback from our, on our plan. We attended the session and received feedback from West Ed, who is, has partnered with the State Department of Education. Overall, the consultant team praised the clarity and cohesiveness of the Waterbury Public Schools and the effective utilization of data throughout the plan. They did provide feedback to clarify the identification of strategies to include ownership of who is responsible for each action and also to revise the listed progress indicators to be more specific. At this time, we have included all the recommendations in the plan and now it's reflected within the plan. As we wrap up our presentation tonight, we want to express our sincere gratitude to the devoted educators of color, multilingual teachers, and all of our teachers across our district who have remained committed to teaching in Waterbury Public Schools. Your contributions are invaluable, and we are grateful for your presence, dedication, and everything that you do for our students. Thank you. Any discussion? Any questions? Thank you. Yes. Vice President Brown. Thank you very much. And I think uh, Waterbury is playing a real leadership role in being so innovative in these programs. I just have a question in terms of the impact of the public act that is requiring the city of Waterbury to pay 10% of any additional funds towards this effort. I don't know if that's what you feel about that impact. Currently, you want to get back to me? You can get back to I me. I can get back want. to them, but we are working with the school business office, and we have devised a plan that we plan to share with Dr. Ruffin and how we're going to use the 10%. Okay. It's mostly going to be invested in some of our programs, like the teacher residencies programs, and, and uh, also for the special education program that we have in line with Central Connecticut State University, okay. as well as our, our teachers that come up with the next gen. Our next gen students, who are students that come from the university, and they work as substitutes throughout the week, and we pay them, and we're going to pay them through that money to get them interested in the, uh, teaching. Okay, I'd be interested in the report when you have it. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions, discussion? Okay. Thank you, Juan, Marissa, and Carly. Thank you. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Vice President we, Brown. I think we did 13.2, correct? No. No. We were on 13.2. Okay. Request approval of a facility equipment user agreement with Connecticut State Community College. So, oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. Yeah. Oh, that's no, that's the right one. Uh, okay. <laughs> yep, I'm sorry. Yeah. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 13.3, request approval of the new position of Director of Multilingual Education. Second. Discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 13.4, request approval of a worksite agreement with Northwest Regional Workforce Investment Board. Oh. Second. Hold on. Wait a minute. Carrie pointed out that this is a little bit more detailed, so I'll read it. The Committee of the Whole moves that the Waterbury Board of Education approve a worksite agreement with Northwest Regional Workforce Investment Board at no cost to provide employment, training, and education services to eligible participants in the internship program. Second. Okay. Discussion? Well? Oh. Yes. I actually... Um, 
this will be my third year. I applied again, but I work for the Northwest oh. Regional Workforce. Mm -hmm. um, when I, I originally applied because I was um, 15, so I wasn't able to get a regular job. So I applied for a summer job, and I was working at the Walnut Orange Walsh Community Center. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. It's on Walnut. So I really liked the program, and I applied again. Even though I can get a regular job, I like being able to. <laughs> I like being able to work in the community at like a summer camp over the summer. Thank you. Okay, so thank you for that. That's great. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Thirteen point five. The Committee of the Whole recommends approval and support of the January 11, 2024 request from Dr. Verna Ruffin for a contract renewal for a term of three years. Further request that Mayor Pernaruski begin discussions with Dr. Verna Ruffin for the development of a three-year contract. Second. Discussion. Madam President. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, thank you. I, I want to start by being clear that I have absolutely no animosity with the superintendent. I think in the three or four months that we've been working together, we have had a good working relationship, a collegial working relationship. And I have no disagreement that there are good things that have been happening throughout the district. And I don't in any way intend to denigrate those things that have been happening. A lot of that is really good stuff that's been going on, the dual language school, the early college programs that we have, and other things that we have seen. But I also think that there exist issues in the relationship between the superintendent and our teachers and our administrators. At this point, I think we need to understand what underlies that. As I've had a couple of conversations with the superintendent about it, we meet weekly, we haven't talked about this every week, but we meet weekly. But as I've said, I think whether they're perceptions or whether they're reality, the fact is that they need to be addressed, they need to be understood, and they need to be fixed. Because we know that for all of the good things that are happening in Waterbury schools, we still have a struggle with many of our students who aren't performing. And there are lots of reasons, and I don't mean in any way to say that that's all Dr. Ruffin's fault and she's not working to try to correct that. But we know those issues are there. And I can tell you that we are not going to solve those issues unless we have everyone pulling in the same direction and working together. The superintendent's office, the administrators, the teachers, the paraprofessionals, the mayor's office, the city of Waterbury, parents, all of us have to be focused on the same thing. And if there is an issue in that relationship between the superintendent and the folks who are working in the schools, it has to be understood and it has to be addressed. And for that reason, because we know that, that that disconnect is going to have an effect on the educational outcomes. And so from my perspective, I don't think that we just say that's the end of the relationship with the superintendent and there's no contract, but I think we need to work on that. And my proposal would be to extend the contract by one year and let's see if we can fix that relationship and see where we can go from there. Because I think that's the only way that we are going to fully succeed in addressing the needs of our students. So that would be my proposal. I don't think I have the ability to make a motion on this board, and I don't think I have a vote unless there is a tie. But I also think that I have been the person that people have been coming to and talking about some of these issues over the last few months. And so I feel an obligation to bring it to your attention, to make a recommendation, and to do what I can to see that we get this resolved so that we can all move forward in the same direction with the goal that I think we all have, which is to see that our students, all of our students, are educated and succeed in our system. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Commissioner O'Brien. <laughs> um, I've lived through in the city at least seven superintendents. And after the last superintendent, and my kids all went through this school, and I felt very honored when I was elected onto this board because I have seen growth for our 19,000 students, which we are responsible for. I have seen a future that we've never had before. 
I have seen many of my children's friends, now teachers in this system, and loving it. So I listen to them. They're like my own children. And I have seen a communication in, in our students excited for the first time with the so many different programs that we have been able to institute into the different schools. And this is something I have never seen before in this city. And I think we need to continue to move forward. Communication has always been a problem with no matter what superintendent we've had, nobody is ever gonna be happy. You're gonna have unevenness on always with any superintendent. So I, I wanted to put my sense in because that's how I feel. Those are the numbers I look at. Those are the children I talk to. Those are the teachers I talk to that I know. And I see a lot of positive things. And we have to move forward. We can't keep moving backwards. The city has to continue to move forward or our children will fail even more. Thank you, Mr. Madam President. Commissioner Van Stone. Thank you, Madam President. Through you, I just want to make sure everyone's clear that this is strictly one vote tonight, and that one vote is to renew the current contract for the next three years, mm -hmm. as is, I believe, one of the clauses in that contract. So, it's recommended. Just so we understand uh, exactly what the vote is on the floor. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Serrano Adorno. Thank you, Madam President. Um, as I have stated several times, I uh, always commend Dr. Ruffin. I think everything she has done for these several years has been exemplary, um, and I still stand my, you know, my stance on that. Um, I know that she's had to make tough decisions, uh, as we all, and I think she's done it with grace and with passion. I would like to have seen, and, and, and I agree if there is a communication disconnect, that those individuals, you know, come and talk to Dr. Ruffin. She, she can't address a situation or try to fix something if she's unaware of what exactly is going on. And I think she has that open door concept where anyone can come to her and there won't be any repercussions. If not, it'll be compassionate and understanding to come up with a resolution. Um, because again, all our focus here, we all have the same goal, you know, and it's those 19,000 students. You know, I've always commend our, our teachers in the city. They are heroes. They've put up with a lot. The pandemic has been so challenging. And, you know, we're still maybe dealing with some of the repercussions from that. However, we have grown, we've learned, we have grown, and we continue to grow with the leadership of Dr. Ruffin. I personally and definitely would always recommend for her to continue her three-year contract. Um, you know, with all due respect, Mayor, uh, I don't think the one year would be appropriate in this manner. Um, but I would love to see that, you know, our, our commissioners here, when we were doing the interviewing process, it was a unanimous vote. We're all parties, and, and parties aside, but we all came to an agreement to hire Dr. Ruffin because she was the best qualified individual for our district. And even throughout the years and the evaluations, there has been the majority, um, the, again, that we've all came with the same, you know, exemplary um, recommendations on her evaluations. Her communication, she is out there in the community, and maybe we, there are things that we don't see, and honestly, that maybe we don't even need to see. You know, she is a person that she is accountable for everything. She doesn't ever back away from a challenge. She, you know, goes head on, and, you know, we're all elected officials here, and our constituents voted for each of us, even behind the scrutiny that me and my family faced. And yet I was voted with the highest votes for my second term. And I know that those constituents rely on each and every one of us board members to do the right thing for our district. And 
from the last time I've known, I think we have all came to a consensus at one point that it was unanimous. You know, maybe that might have changed, but that hasn't changed my opinion. And I would love that, you know, Mayor, that you would support us commissioners in, in what we feel is best for our district. Thank you, Madam President. Commissioner Arlen. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to uh, agree with uh, Commissioner O'Brien and Serrano Adorno that um, communication has always been a problem in this district. Uh, when I went to school, uh, but my main concern is the 19,000 children that we are over now, including I have one in that bunch as well, uh, but I have seen a turnaround, and I believe if the communication is a problem, then it can get can better. Can you speak in the mic? If the communication is a problem, then it will get better. But one thing I do like to say is that Dr. Ruffin opens up that door for communication, especially with parents. There's a parent advisory group. Every other month that parents can go to uh, and talk with Dr. Ruffin. So, you know, I just want to put on record, too, that I agree, and I would like to see her with her three-year contract. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, Vice President Brown. Thank you, Madam President. You know, I've been on the board for 12 years, starting my 13th board, and I think that um, I remember a few years ago when uh, we had the morale issue of the teachers come forward. I'll, I remember mm. it vividly. Mm. We were at Duggan's school, yes. and uh, Dr. Uh, Olet. Kathy Olette was the, was the president, and we had a scathing report from the uh, president of the union about morale of the teachers. Uh, so I think this is an issue that, as the mayor said, we have to address. But I would say that right now we have a current president of the union who will not meet with Dr. Ruffin Ooh. and has treated her in my presence very disrespectfully. And I think moving forward, there's always hope. And I think that starting communication with the unions, let's face it, the whole union is based on a, a model that's adversarial. Mm -hmm. It's not anybody's fault, that's just the way it's set up. And we are not producing widgets in a school district. We're dealing with children and human beings. Teachers are not you know, laborers and, and all the confrontation is, uh, historically that unions fought for, rightly so. But we have to think differently about the relationship between management and teachers. It has to be more collaborative. It has to be mutual respect. It has to be built on the mission of, is this good for our kids? Right. And we've heard, you know, last time that uh, Mr. Egan came before us, and rightly so, uh, raised issues about overcrowding and uh, so forth. Uh, but these issues are being addressed, maybe not as quickly, maybe not to what you want, but they are being addressed. It's like, it's like things are happening. So I think that moving forward, as the mayor said, we have to have a different way to communicate. It can't be in a disrespectful manner. It has to be, this is the problem, let's all get together and try to solve it. Right now, I don't think we have a system set up that way when we have uh, leadership refusing to meet with our superintendent. That's untenable to me. So I feel as if it's not a superintendent's issue, it's a, it's a culture issue. And I think we've all been around enough to know that it is personalities and it is uh, we have to move forward and humbly say hey I'm not perfect I want to improve we all want to improve but we have to come into the dialogue with an open heart and not be so negative I mean the world is too negative as it is none of us are up here because we want to be negative we're here because we want to make a difference and we want our kids to succeed. And we can't do that in an adversarial atmosphere. So I would implore that as we move this contract forward, that we do say, OK, how can we move forward and have a, a better communication, a better way to address issues, and know that nobody wants to not happen. 
we don't want to sit back and say this isn't true. There's kernels of truth in all of this. We know that. But let's be serious here. Let's come to the table in, in, with good faith and solve some of these problems. But we, ha we don't have a, an opportunity right now to do that. So I would vote on this three-year contract, hoping that, as the mayor said, we can come, up, come to a better agreement and way to communicate and work with the teachers and the paraprofessionals and so that we can have that collaborative uh, this, and, and stay t true to our mission, which is about the kids. Thank you. Anyone else? Commissioner Jackson, I'm so sorry. Thank you, just really briefly, um, I just wanted to acknowledge that um, heavy lies the head. I understand um, as far as someone outside of your role, this is an unbelievable amount of work to be done. And when it comes to expectations, there's expectations of the role, and then there are expectations of the person. And um, one of those is a little bit harder of a game to play. Um, if, if you were a different person, we wouldn't even be having some of the discussions that we have. So I just wanted to acknowledge that from the beginning, I remember when they were interviewing you years ago and there was another candidate that we, at the time, some of us thought might have been a better choice. And now I refer to that person as what's her name because I don't even remember. Because you have, um, you exceeded what a lot of people thought you were going to. Um, you definitely uh, made liars out of um, so many people. You have changed um, my mind and my perspective. And so I just wanted to acknowledge that um, you're doing things that people said could not be done. Thank you. Anyone else? Any more discussion? I just want to say, um, I don't know where this district would be if it wasn't for the vision of Dr. Verna Ruffin. She has brought us out of the darkness and into the light. She has made Waterbury shine. Waterbury is on the map. A lot of things that she has done, everyone else is trying to emulate. Yet she gets no acknowledgement, no anything for all the work that she's done. We have 19,000 students here. And those are the people that we work for, them and their families. And as of right now, she has definitely, definitely bought so much more to Waterbury. Yes, communication. Yes, if people are being told to do your job after not having to do your job for so long, is there going to be problems? Yes, there is. Is there going to be a communication issue? Yes, there is. Is there going to be someone that wants something and they didn't get it, and therefore here come, here, they're within the lies? Yes, there will be. No one, no one knows everything that's going on in their office. No one. I don't care how much you think you know you don't know because you never know who's doing what. I think a three-year contract is more than fair for her because I don't believe with all the things that we have going on, all the initiatives that her and her team have put together, I don't know if anyone could come in and pick up the ball from that. And I would hate for our students to take 20 steps back because people don't want to communicate, because people don't want to get along, because people are upset because they're being told to do their job. So I will be voting yes for a three-year contract because I think it's well-deserved. I think she's got a lot more to do for this city. I think that there's a lot more avenues that she has not even touched that she's willing to do. She came in here in the beginning with a plan, and in 100 days, it was done. 
So let's give her that respect. Mr. Mayor, I understand you, you hear, you're hearing things, people are coming to you with stuff. I'm out there in the trenches. I don't hear what you're saying is being said. Are the teachers upset? Yes, it's their shortage, but it's all over the place. It's not just Waterbury. It's not just a Waterbury thing. It's a, it's a national thing. And we are doing the best. We're, we're leading the way with minority t hiring. We're leading the way with, with opening up a, a dual language school. We're leading the way in so much more. Our kids are, are, are receiving so much more information on grants and, and just initiatives that she's put forth, that she, her and her team, because I don't want to leave her team out, because they are a, a vital part of what she is able to do. So I'm, I'm just saying I, I hope that this does not, it's not a, a thing where, where we just listen to a few and don't count on the many. Yes, absolutely. I just don't want to get lost in all of what's been said here and what I said at the beginning, the underlying issue that is of great concern to me, which is implementing all of these changes through the people who work in the schools. And I don't know that there's been a disagreement that there's an issue with that relationship going forward. That needs to be fixed. There's no question it needs to be fixed or we are not going to succeed. Exactly. That's the point I'm trying to make. We may disagree on how we get there, but the point is it needs to be fixed. We need to concentrate on it. I don't think, I think we get there quicker if we do a one-year contract than we do if we do a three-year contract. The fact that there's always been communication problems may be part of the explanation for why this district lags so much. And as I said, I know it's not all, there's a lot of different things going on, but 20% of our third grade students read at grade level in Waterbury. That means 80% don't read at grade level. And if you're not reading at grade level at third grade, you're going to struggle. Now there may be reasons why that's happening doesn't fix the struggles that go on into the future. It is not going to solve our problems of poverty and homelessness and crime if we don't fix that problem. And if we're not all working together as a team, we're not going to be able to fix that problem. That's what my concern is. That's all I'm interested in. I've got four years as mayor to try to move the city forward. And education is one of the key issues to moving the city forward. And I'm very interested and very dedicated to seeing that happen. That's really the thing I'm most interested in. And I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page and pulling in the same direction. And if we don't solve this problem, which has been around for a long time, we're not going to get there. So I know there's a lot of issues. I know there's a lot of things that have been happening. But as I say all the time, a large number of our students simply are not succeeding. We need to fix that. And we're not going to fix it if we're not talking to each other. The people who are in the classrooms are not talking to the people making the policy. There is no way we can fix the problems we face here in Waterbury. That's what I'm, it's not personal. It's not an issue of attacking. It's not an issue of taking sides. In 37 years as a lawyer, 22 years in politics, there are two sides to every issue. Anyone who's raised children know there are two sides to every issue. The concept for us, for me as the mayor, for you as the board of education, is to bring these folks together and make it work so that they're talking to each other. Understand the problems, understand the distrust, figure out how we can make it work. Sometimes, although we think we're being perceived in a certain way, we wish we're being perceived in a certain way, we're not. And no matter how much we hope that's true, if the other party doesn't perceive us that way, we're never going to have that communication. We need to figure out what's keeping what I want you to believe about me from being what you do, in fact, believe about me. And maybe we can never get there. Maybe we'll conclude in a year it's never going to happen, and we'll have to figure out what else to do. But we've got to focus on it over the next year. That's my concern. And without that, all of the rest of the things we've talked about tonight are going to come to nothing. 
That's my concern. And four years from now, three years from now, six years from now, we'll be having the same conversation. I want that to stop. I want the conversation to be different in the future. And at the end of the day, I probably am the person at this table with the least amount of actual authority to make that happen, and I am going to be the person who's held most accountable when it doesn't happen. And I understand that. So I'm going to do everything I can to try to make that happen. And I believe that this is the best way to do that for right now. I'm not saying don't extend the contract. I'm, I'm here saying extend the contract for, for a year, and let's try to fix this problem. And if a year from now everything's better, we're all in great shape, we move forward. If not, we've got to figure out what we do at that point. I think three years from now we're going to be having the same discussion if we move forward the way you want tonight. I, I honestly believe that's what's going to happen, and it's not going to be in anyone's interest. So, having said that, I know Mr. Uh, Commissioner Van Stone had raised the issue of the motion. Can someone repeat exactly what the motion is that's before the board tonight that's going to be coming to me? I'm out of order now. <laughs> okay, the Committee of the Whole recommends approval and support of the January 11, 2024 request from Dr. Verna D. Ruffin for a contract renewal for a term of three years. Further, request that Mayor Pernaruski begin discussions with Dr. Werner R. Ruffin for the development of a three-year contract. Second. Roll, Roll call vote. Vice President Brown? Yes. Commissioner Frias? Yes. Commissioner Ireland? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Commissioner Navarro? Yes. Commissioner O'Brien? Yes. Commissioner Orso? Yes. Commissioner Serrano Adorno? Yes. Commissioner Van Stone? No. President Hernandez? Yes. Motion carries nine to one. Commissioner Serrano Adorno. Thank you, Madam President. I think that while we're here in this discussion that clearly we're all passionate about, we have Mr. Egan here on the floor that I would like to recommend that sometime before the end of the night, we all have the best interest to set up a meeting with Dr. Ruffin and respectfully have the conversations that we all think that she deserves so that we can move forward and come up with a better resolution. Thank you. Item number 14, superintendent's notification to the board. Commissioner Jackson, may I have a motion? Um, I motion to receive and place on file the superintendent's notification to the board. Um, let's see, items 14.1 to 14.7. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 15, do any com commissioners have anything going on that you want to discuss and let the rest of the board members know, like uh, liaison meetings? Task force? Is that what No. Yeah. Yes. Just for uh, Bridge to Success, there's an early care and education resource fair that will be happening April 6th at the North End Rec uh, for ages eight to zero. And again, that's an education, early care and education resource fair. Uh, the time will be 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the North End Rec. Anyone else? Okay, I'll just say, uh, Vice uh, President uh, Brown. Yes, uh, from the Policy and Legislative Committee, uh, through the efforts of uh, CABE and uh, the district, Dr. Ruffin, we have been testifying at the state capitol on the budget, the state budget, and we are hearing that the uh, additional $150 million that was earmarked uh, is going to be okay, but it's still early in the session. <laughs> the session uh, ends in May. Uh, and there's some other, other bills that we are tracking and that we have testified on. Uh, there's one especially that I think we did kill, uh, Senate Bill 153, which would have required the districts to pay for uh, transportation 
of students from Waterbury who were not attending our schools but attending Cato Tech or one of the tech schools, they, we would have to pay for their transportation. It sounds crazy, but that was a bill, so we were able to kill that bill. So be vigilant. <laughs> Commissioner Serrano Adorno. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I do just want to make uh, a note that this Sunday, March 24th, is World Tuberculosis Day. Uh, working for the health department, actually, at the tuberculosis clinic, um, a lot of people don't realize how much, you know, we, we do are, you know, or exposed to potential uh, tuberculosis and latent tuberculosis. Uh, currently, 75 million lives saved since 2000 by global efforts to end tuberculosis. 10.6 million people fell ill with tuberculosis in 2022. 1.3 million people died of tuberculosis in 2022. Uh, currently, the city of Waterbury, we have uh, three active tuberculosis cases. Um, they are under direct observatory treatment. They are in observations. Um, they are following the proper protocols according to the DPH and the health department. Um, so we just ask individuals um, to please, you know, get tested, use precaution. Um, you could always call us at the health department if anybody needs any screening, if you're traveling overseas and so forth. Um, so just wanted to let you know that Sunday is World TB Day. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Commissioner Frias. Thank you, um, Madam President. So on April 3rd, um, there's going to be a statewide action where early educators will be participating. Um, here in Waterbury is going to be, um, I believe, at the green around 9 in the morning. It's called Morning Without Child Care. Um, it's from the Child Care for Connecticut's Future um, organization um, that is actually a coalition. Um, so I invite all parents and all early educators and all of, all of you to participate and be present that day. Anything else? All right. Number 16, Commissioner Frias, can you make a motion to adjourn? I motion um, to convene in. Oh, no, sorry. Nope. The it. next one. I motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Discussion. <laughs> <laughs> we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Oh, <laughs>